Hey guys, <clears throat> I'm back, and I'm here to finish off something I was putting off for a while, which was the ending or the second part to the pointers uh, episode and lesson, because uh, I talked a lot about pointers and I didn't talk at all about dynamic memory, which is one of the most common usages for pointers in C. Um, because I went over so much in the first video, this second one, uh, the little supplemental one, is going to be actually pretty short because there isn't that much else to say since you already know about pointers. Uh, the main concept of this video is um, essentially where you're getting your pointer references or where you're, you're getting your memory to reference a point to. And that's where dynamic memory comes into play. So to recap the last video, uh, just some quick pro properties of pointers. Like I said, if you haven't seen the last video, you should definitely watch it before trying to watch this one. Um, long story short, pointers are variables. Um, they reference or point to uh, other blocks of data or data types. Um, they are assignable, uh, which means you can assign them many times to point to anything you want. They're dereferenceable, meaning you can access the reference data. And they're incrementable, meaning that you can actually use pointer arithmetic to offset the pointer uh, forwards or backwards from the, its initial memory position or memory address location. Um, so here's a quick recap. I'm going to go over two examples we had before which used what's called static allocation. And I've highlighted that in blue here. Um, here, man is statically allocated and set directly equal to a value of a man struct, which is, you know, x, y, uh, life, and name. Um, and, of course, the pointer is set to, crap, uh, I left the line out there, but the pointer is set to the address of man, meaning that it, he references uh, man. Second example is an array pointer reference. So once again, the array is statically allocated. We're using the square bracket notation 1024, allocating an array of 1024 integers, and it's statically set equal to zero. Um, and then the pointer, again, is set equal to the array to create a reference to existing statically allocated uh, memory block or array. Um, now I'm going to talk about the cases where what if you don't know in advance how many items you want to have or that group, that, that the amount of things you want to allocate is so big you don't want it to be around for a very long time and you want to have more specific control of your RAM allocation, for example, like a giant image. Images can take up megabytes of, of space in RAM and you don't want to statically allocate an array that would store something like an image. So this is where dynamic allocation comes in. Um, as you can see, the difference between this, this slide and this one is that instead of statically allocating the array, we directly instantiate the array pointer and set it equal to a call to malloc, which is a standard library, standard C library function, which will actually allocate a, 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 a set of bytes for you. And what we do is we set, we set the array equal to malloc, and then we tell it we want to allocate 1024 integers. And since malloc takes bytes, uh, the number of bytes it needs to uh, allocate as an argument, we use size of int, which is a special operator, which returns the number of bytes a certain type will take up. For example, size of int will return 4. So 4 bytes per int times 1024 gives us the uh, 4096 bytes we need to allocate this array. So this actually creates out of thin air, if you want to think of it that way, the array and then sets the pointer reference to it so that you actually have your own memory that you've created. And uh, you can use this array as long as you want until you're done with it, in which case you free the same pointer that was returned to you which gives the memory back to the uh, to the operating system and frees the RAM. And then as a uh, good practice, you could set that pointer to null so you don't so you know it's 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 not referencing anything valid anymore. Um, so let me just go ahead and go over one second example here. Uh, this the struct example we had before. Now instead of stati statically allocating man, we actually set the pointer equal to a call to malloc. Again just one man needs to be allocated, so we use size of man, which gives us the number of bytes it needs. And we get once again, we create a man structure out of thin air, allocate the memory, can use it as long as we want, and then when we're done, we're free it. Um, that's the basic gist of dynamic memory allocation. So there's two tools that, at least in C, that people use to do this. The first one is the malloc function. And as I said, 
Uh, you call malloc whenever you want to allocate a block of memory, and the argument it takes is the number of bytes to allocate. And you can use combinations of multiplication, such as when you're working with arrays, and the size of operator to always get the right number of bytes. So, for example, uh, if you wanted to allocate you know, a hundred floats, you would use a hundred times size of float there and you would get back your a hundred floats. Or you could just directly put a number in there if you know you're just working with bytes and say you want exactly, uh, you know, one kilobyte, you would put 1024 in there and you would get exactly a kilobyte. Um, the rep return value you would think would be uh, whatever pointer type you need, but um, Malik doesn't know what you're allocating, so it uses the generic pointer type, which is also called the void pointer. Um, void pointers are basically exist for the sake of temporarily having a pointer that can point to any type, and then later on you assign that equal to a typed pointer, something like a char or an int or a struct pointer. So uh, that, that's what that void is there for. Um, anything that's been uh, passed to you from malloc is memory that you are responsible for and you have to free. So when you call malloc, you have to later on when you're done, at some point in the program, pass that pointer that was returned to you, that block, and you have to free it. You do that by calling free. And um, those are the two tools of memory allocation in C. Um, everything that we've been doing that involves me talking about, you know, the SDL game code that we've been writing that calls SDL surfaces that get created and the textures and uh, you know um, opening uh, these things and then freeing them and destroying them when we're done these all under the hood use malloc and free to, to maintain their memory so it kind of will paint a better picture as to why we've been calling things that create things and then things that free things uh, when we're done that's kind of what's been going on um, you gotta watch out with for pitfalls though when you call free if you call free with a bad pointer meaning one that's already been freed or was never allocated in the first place or with a null pointer your program will crash so you have to be very careful when you're working with free and always make sure that you check to see if your pointers are valid before you just pass them to free um, also there you can have the opposite problem if you um, allocate something with malloc and then forget to free it that memory will leak and you will use up that RAM for the existence of your entire program which is considered very bad practice because you're wasting the the computer users RAM and you know you're making his computer slow for no reason and you won't actually get that RAM back until your program quits and if the operating system sucks and is has leaks of its own sometimes the RAM will never be back until the computer reboots so you always gotta make sure you free everything that you allocate and see it's really important um, it's one of the, uh, most other programming languages, higher level ones like Java and JavaScript uh, do this for you so that things that are dynamically allocated are automatically freed. But um, that automatic memory management scheme comes at a heavy performance price and that's why those languages are slower uh, than C. So with great power comes great responsibility. So uh, as a final recap, I read documentation of API functions that return pointers. You gotta, if a function returns its pointer, you should be suspicious of whether or not you're responsible for that memory. And if it has a name like create, new, or open, or init, there's a very good chance that you're gonna have to call um, the, pair, the, the, the function that should be paired with uh, to destroy, release, close, or shut down the same memory. Um, so it's very common. It's very common when you are working with uh, functions that have specialized names that you call the appropriate function that's documented. So for example, if you have a pointer returned to you by a function with a name like create surface, you don't call free on that pointer. You call the associated destroy surface function, which will call free for you. Like I said, the documentation of these API explain all this. It's, a lot, it's pretty confusing when you're starting out, but you get the hang of it pretty quick. And the general rule is, for every malloc you gotta call free, and for every other function that has a unique name that creates memory, you gotta call the documented, you know, paired destroy or release function for it. Um, so that's the basic gist of dynamic memory. Um, there's a hell of a lot more I could talk about with this, but for the sake of our, you know, getting started in game programming videos, I think this will suffice. So thanks for watching, guys. Stay tuned.